How we doing everybody? Sunday afternoon in the Cheesy Moon Workshop. It's another beautiful day. Going to do a quick recap of the knives I picked up this weekend, yesterday. Sorry, a little camera shake there. As you can see from all this, it's been kind of a busy afternoon. Um, but I wanted to show you real quick the progress made on cleaning up the three large knives. Ah, even my supplies got filthy. My hands are filthy. Um, all these knives I worked on need to be soap and watered. But um, first, this Boy Scout knife. I thought that was steel. Um, because it was so heavily corroded and and black looking, but it was actually brass. There you see the Boy Scout emblem on there, and official knife of Boy Scouts. And I I didn't find any marks until uh, I got to the flits on the brass then I discovered Western USA I have not researched this anything to find a date for it yet I believe I did successfully super glue the loose tiles uh, that are not as uniform and smooth as they once were because they had broken out and there's small minute pieces missing but for the purposes of of the knife, I, w I started to think about sharpening it, but I don't believe this knife had ever been sharpened. Um, so the blade is in, in great shape, other than um, some patina and some minor pitting right in here. Come on, focus. There's some minor pitting along the edge of the blade there, and some back here on the back. And I am confident that with the right sandpaper combination and and a lot of time and effort that could be, you know, poly or, or sanded down and then, you know, but I'm not, I'm not that guy. Um, I like the patina on this knife. I want it to still look like the old knife that it is. Um, if I wanted a brand new looking knife, I'd go buy one. But I've uh, relieved a lot of stress this afternoon. The, the, the aluminum shined up quite well. Okay, the other one uh, that I got cleaned up pretty good is the uh, EGW knife. Again, um, I want the patina on there. I want it to still look like an old knife. I don't want to put it on a sanding belt or a sanding wheel. I still want to see the original grinds in the blade. Um, the steel bolster and in butt plate here. There's still some red rust down in there that I really can't get to without disassembling the knife. So I'll spray it with some... Uh, I like this uh, penetrating oil, Lucas, very similar to PB Blaster and some of those others, but it it actually sort of dissolves rust, um, so I'll, I'll get some of that down in there and try not to get it on the leather. Um, the leather, I've oiled it three times and it just keeps sucking it in, so I'm going to keep oiling it. I don't want it to become wet, but I want it to be nourished. Um, Super happy with this knife. Super um, happy to add it to my collection. It's my personal collection. All these, uh, these are not for sale. Um, it's uh, the the connection with these knives, the history. Um, if Miss Tammy is watching this video, if she would care to comment, let me know if either her uh, father or grandfather served in the military. Uh, that would be 
good to add to my story about these knives. Um, or maybe just share a little bit more about uh, those gentlemen and to add to the history of these knives. I would greatly appreciate that. But uh, to me, it's just, it's just an awesome knife. Again, it's not some super knife. It's not worth a lot of money, but it, it means a lot to me. Uh, the blood, sweat, and tears. Fortunately, no blood today, but the work and, and, and the uh, time spent on it, I now have a connection with this knife. I know that uh, Kevin, the knife doctor, mentions that a lot. You do form a connection to a knife when you're when you're this deep into it with your hands and you know uh, for me if I can get this without power tools without the grinders and sanders and stuff which I have um, you know I'm, I'm no stranger to having power tools but um, spending time on them and, and putting in time it, and it's a more personal connection and there are some deep pits and gouges where something has happened with this knife. Not a lot of pitting on this, just heavy patina. A little pitting that I could feel on this edge. But that was very cool. The other knife, the Queen. Again, the leather. Super thirsty. Just keeps drinking up the mink oil. Um, I put it on there and two minutes later it's back to just uh, thirsty again and uh, there's your name on the back G Gilding I don't know if that's Miss Tammy's father grandfather or if that was on there when they got it uh, who knows leather still pretty pretty supple pretty uh, flexible could be carried it's missing the uh, tie strap that would wrap around the the handle, uh, the handle cleaned up pretty good, but as I suspected and expected, if I can get it, that blade is super pitted. Um, this was the size, you know, even all the way down to to the edge super pitted um, this side very heavily pitted at the tip come on focus very heavily pitted there it's a, it's okay back here in the back not too bad um, this was a lot of scotch bright I didn't use any sandpaper uh, sandpaper tends to scratch it quite a bit. This knife's been through a lot already, so <laughs> it was just the uh, good old scotch Bright I have right here, and you see I did a number on my scotch Bright It's pretty wore out. Um, a good old scotch Bright and a lot of rubbing and buffing and sanding, and then I, I did go cover it with a little bit of flitz, and then uh, a secret that I learned recently, once you clean the, the knives and use flits, and I'm going to skip this open water just for the sake of this video, but Windex. Um, if you want to shine your windows and get them squeaky clean and shiny, what do you use? You use Windex. That was a tip I picked up from a a fellow at a flea market one day, he was wiping down his knives with Windex. And when I asked him why, he said it helps them stay shiny. And he said it doesn't really get them shiny, but it helps them to stay shiny and it cleans off, you know, a lot of the schmutz that, you know, gets on them uh, in between trips and then transportation. So, um, and I found it to be true. I did it on my wedding ring, and um, it's it stayed shiny for quite a bit. And I put it through, as you can see, I put it through a lot. But there you go, guys. Um, the three 
knives from Miss Tampy's, uh, Tammy's uh, family collection there. Um, I hope that um, she gets an opportunity to see this and see that they cleaned up pretty nicely compared to what they were. I still need to try to straighten this one out, but it's not bugging me. You know, that's the way it was. Um, I don't know if it was used to, to pry something at some point, maybe explaining some of these nicks and gouges up here. Um, but still a fun knife. Um, proud to have it in my collection. There you go, guys. Knives cleaned up. Uh, I might, you know, tinker from time to time, further refining the uh, cleaning up of those knives. But for now, um, I'm going to call them good. There you go. Um, yard sale knives. I'll tackle the estate sale knives in another video. Until I see you all again. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the videos with your friends, especially if you saw a tip or a trick like the one from uh, the Southern Knife Hobbyist. I'll tag him again in this video. Um, please share the videos with other folks. And uh, until I see you again, have a beautiful day.